First, they've reopened Ariel's Grotto, home of the Ariel meet and greet. Step right up and take your picture with an actress whose legs fell asleep an hour ago. Then, the White Witch of Narnia turned Ariel into wood and fastened her to the front of a ship, signaling the entrance to the Little Mermaid ride. The queue winds you through the outside of Prince Eric's castle before taking you inside Ariel's cave, which has been hit by a storm, scattering all of the human junk. Holographic CGI crabs are putting things away, but if they put the wrong thing in the pile, it's up to a kid to point at them. That's... the whole game. Most of the time, they put the right thing in the right pile, but if it's the wrong thing, they just wait around to be pointed at, making this the first ever theme park attraction based on press space to win. Then you get to Robot Not Buddy Hackett, and just like in the movie, he looks at human things and makes shit up about them. I want everyone to shout out what it is. One, two, three! Oh, actually, it's called a flash portal. It's a great way to pull up. <laughs> isn't it hilarious when people speak declaratively about cultures they don't understand? Not if your Epcot video is any indication. Oh, shut up. Then you get to the ride itself, which I've been reliably informed is identical to the recent California Adventure ride, so I won't go into too much detail since I know some jerk with a camera is planning on tackling this as soon as Chris Hansen is sufficiently distracted. But as a basic overview, this is much more advanced than most Fantasyland dark rides with very detailed animatronics. It's more like a lower-scale Haunted Mansion, right down to the ride system. Except while Haunted Mansion's super impressive graveyard scene is at the end, this ride's most elaborate scene is under the sea, square in the middle. And hey, the ride actually has kissed the girl. Although, somehow they do even less with Ursula's defeat than the Hollywood Studios live show. And I thought that wasn't possible.